Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. This is the commentary on the Minor Prophet book of Zechariah, chapter 7. Now, there was um, two kings in Persia who conquered Babylon, where Judah had been spending 70 years of captivity as foretold by their prophets. At the end of the 70 years, they were allowed to return to Jerusalem and rebuild. There were two kings, evidently. There was Cyrus and Darius. Some people say Darius. You know, I wonder... But, uh, so let's read Zechariah chapter 7 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius, or Darius, that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu, when they had sent unto the house of God Sherezer and Rejimechlech, I don't know, some of these Old Testament words. Oh boy. And their men to pray before the Lord. And to speak unto the priests, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets. So they had prophets back then. Saying, Should I weep? Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years. Now, our calendars have been changed. We have what's called the Gregorian calendar, if memory serves me correctly. God's calendar started, it was an agricultural calendar, and it started, the first month started mm, around March and April, the end of March, the beginning of April. And that was the spring. You know, our calendar starts in the middle of winter. I mean, how crazy is that? But uh, Passover was, uh, if memory serves me correctly, it was two weeks after the beginning of the new year. So, roughly end of April, I'm sorry, end of March or somewhere around the beginning or middle of April, somewhere around there, it was time to plant, plant your crops. So, uh, five months from the end of March is approximately what we're talking about here. So, you know, don't think... Uh, May is the fifth month. It's not. Because everything's been changed. All right, so in verse 4, Then came the word of the Lord of the hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, now remember, they, he was asking, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? So in verse 5, he says, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me, and when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did ye not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets? When Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. 
Ah, here we go. And show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. That sounds like the message Jesus taught. In Matthew 5, 7, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In Matthew 23, 23, Jesus speaking, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Hmm. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weighty ma weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. In other words, they were majoring on the minors and neglecting the major things. In John chapter 7 and verse 24, we read, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Uh, something I learned in um, when I was taking legal studies in college. Yes, I went to secular college for two years and uh, took business law. A lot of people don't know it, but... Um, the reason why you have to have so many witnesses when you transfer real property, and when we talk about real property, we're talking about houses, land, and like automobiles, you have to have the buyer, you have to have the seller, and you need a notary or an attorney. Now, if you're talking a house, there has to be two unrelated witnesses. So you have a total of five people. Now the reason this happened was because in England they were you would have a uh, a soldier somebody would want to be a, a knight or a soldier and they would go on one of the crusades and they would come back and they would find a priest living in their house. And uh, the priest was, I guess, banking that um, the soldier would die in battle and wouldn't come back. But if he, if he did survive and come back, you find the priest living in the house, and then the priest would just say, well, hey, this guy, before he went to the battle, he said, oh, well, I'm giving my house to the Lord. You know, I'm giving everything I have to the Lord. And, uh, you know... Who's going to argue with a priest? I mean, you know, a man of God, right? And the cry in England was so bad that these priests were stealing the people's property that English made a law that you had to have so many people to, to witness the transfer of property. It couldn't just be the priest's word. But where did they, the priest, the Catholic priest, get this from? Well, they got this from the um, the Pharisees in the old, well, in the New Testament time. So let's take a look at Mark chapter twelve, verse thirty-eight. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them in his doctrine, "Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace." And the chief sheet seats, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses. You see, people, how do you devour a widow's house? Well, the widow would call the priest, the um, the Pharisee, not the Catholic priest to come and pray for her husband that's on his deathbed. 
Well, he would kick everybody out of the room and say, I need to be alone with this man. And then, after the man had passed away, he'd come out and say, well, praise the Lord, this man gave his property to the church or the synagogue. And then they would kick the widow and her children out into the street. That's the meaning of this, verse 40, which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. See, there's damnation, and then there's greater damnation. Not good, huh, for them. But the widow will be avenged one day. And believe me, they'd been doing this stuff for a long, long time. In uh, the book of John, chapter 19, verse 9, uh, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, well, this is Pilate, right? And saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. See, there's sin, and then there's a greater sin. And there's a greater damnation. Verse 12, And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. Haven't you always been lied to by your church liars that it was Rome and Pilate that was responsible for killing and crucifying Jesus? But it's not true. This is the King James Bible. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the you-know-whos cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, Thou art not Caesar's friend, for whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Yeah, they were trying to have uh, accuse Pilate that if you let this guy go, we're accusing you of treason against Rome, which was punishable by death, by making it out that Jesus was trying to make himself king at this particular time. Oh, Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. But he's not going to reclaim his kingdom until he comes back in glory. So, all right, let's go back to Zechariah chapter 7. Okay, so let's go back to verse 9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. And show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor fatherless. Yeah, don't steal their homes when, you're, when their husband's on their deathbed. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Pulled away the shoulder. You know, you ever put your hand on somebody's shoulder and then they just pull it away? Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. See, when the prophets cried unto the people, telling them to repent, the people wouldn't listen. And when judgment and wrath came upon them, and then they cried out unto the Lord, well, <laughs> then the Lord didn't listen. And that's basically 
that that's that's what this is saying that's the bob translation verse 14 but i scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not thus the land was desolate after them that no man passed through nor returned for they laid the pleasant land desolate now remember northern israel was taken captive into captivity by the assyrians they took them out of their land and moved them to a new area. And then uh, the Babylonians did the same thing with uh, Judah. And the Assyrians also took part of Judah also, but not Jerusalem. Because they moved them to a different area. And then sometimes they would take some of the other people from another land and move them into the area where they took Israel out of. That was what they were talking about when they said the Samaritans, because it was a mixed people. Uh, the poor of Israel they left in the land because, well, you're talking the farmers. You know, you you want to leave your farmers there so that they can produce crops, right? But uh, that's why you don't take people from another area and move them to the land where they don't know, you know, what the soil is good for to grow and what have you. So they left the poor of the land in Israel and in Judah. But oftentimes they would move other peoples into the area. And then they would scatter the other people into other areas so that there would not be a revolt. It made it easy, you know, harder for them to revolt. And then when the Babylonians conquered the Assyrians, Israel fled. Um... The Assyrians were really, really bad, from what I understand. Um, they would take a fish hook and put it through the lips of the people they captured and parade them through the streets in honor of their god, Dagon, which was the, uh, the fish god. Uh, I forget. He was half fish and half man. Dagon. You can read about Dagon in the... Uh, Old Testament, and uh, Jonah, the book of Jonah, that was their god, the fish god. So when uh, Jonah got swallowed by the fish, the great fish, and he was spit up on the shore, you know, you probably had a bunch of fishermen there watching the whole spectacle, the whole spectacle, and, um, and they thought, wow, here's a prophet from our god Dagon. <laughs> you know, and when Jonah said repent, they actually believed him and listened to him. So, you know, that's why Jonah was so effective. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.